1979, a mountain in northern New Mexico becomes the focus of stories alleging UFO activity, secret military operations, and sightings of extraterrestrials. Reports describe unexplained activity in the sky and possibly underneath a neighboring mountain. Could it be the site of a top secret base, a joint mission between humans and aliens? Some even claim to witness a subterranean battle. How many dead ETs were recovered? Now, there are reports of new sightings of strange craft near the mountain. If someone says they saw something, they probably saw something. Is a secret underground compound hiding aliens inside a mountain? Or could the truth that prompted these tales be even more sinister? Gray looking ET, large eyes. I wasn't supposed to see it, but I saw it. My name's Jennifer Marshall. After serving in the US Navy, I became a private investigator. Now, I'm on the trail of something otherworldly, decoding the mystery of the alien mountain. Just north of the town of Dulce, New Mexico, on the land of the Jicarilla Apache Nation, sits a landmass over 9,000 feet in elevation, Mount Archuleta. Some have claimed that beneath its surface lies a mysterious alien facility, a secret hub of activity where extraterrestrials and humans work together to test and reverse engineer alien technology. The name of that secret lair is Dulce Base. Mount Archuleta, or Archuleta Mesa, sits on the northernmost part of the state and shares a border with Colorado. Whispers of strange activity have swirled around this alleged alien mountain for decades. Now, new reports of unusual sightings of UFOs in the sky over the town have put the mountain back in focus. New Mexico is best known in the UFO community as the site of Roswell. In 1947, a flying saucer was reportedly captured by the US Army after crashing into a field. Since then, local residents have reported hundreds of sightings in the desert skies above Dulce. Roswell may be known as the UFO capital, but this tiny hamlet has had its own fill of close encounters. I've come here to meet with paranormal investigator Heather Taddy, who says she has a lead on evidence that could be related to Dulce Base. Hey, Heather. Hey, Jen. So this is it, huh? This is it. Somewhere in that mountain is a hidden military base that may have been built with the help of aliens. I'm a paranormal researcher and investigator. Uh, I've had a lifelong fascination with the subject of aliens. Growing up, I was that weirdo in fifth grade ordering all the alien abduction books. I'm very open to the idea that aliens have possibly been visiting this planet for a really long time. There's been stories circulating for decades that there is a hidden base in the Archuleta Mesa, and it's said that it's right under that radio tower. That's where the supposed entrance is. I have to be honest, I don't see a ton of infrastructure here that would support that. I mean, you've got this dirt road here, but there's not a lot of clear cutting. There's not a helo pad, there's not a runway. That's actually what makes this so fascinating because there's been so many eyewitness accounts. People have seen lights go in and out of the mountain. And I have some photographic evidence that I want to show you. Okay. Here is a craft that someone spotted right above where the supposed entrance is. I mean, it is the classic saucer shape, but then it's a blurry photo like most photos of UFOs are. But beyond UFO sightings, there have been alien abductions. There's also been really bizarre cattle mutilations since the 70s in this specific area. And witnesses have seen lights that they can't explain when these cattle mutilations occur. And no one can explain the bizarre way in which these animals are mutilated. One of my goals is to find out what's going on and to understand what connects the strange lights and alien rumors to the dismembered livestock. We have a lot of eyewitness accounts we need to explore. And hopefully they can help us get closer to finding out if there actually is a base. We've got UFO sightings, alien abductions, and cattle mutilations. But the link to all of those is whether or not there is a multi-level advanced military base hidden deep inside that mountain. Some of the strangest evidence was collected by a man named Paul Benowitz. In the 1980s, he became convinced that he discovered this secret alien facility, and, and then he began to spread his ideas about Dulce Base. This guy's name is familiar. It keeps popping up in chat forums regarding UFOs and disinformation campaigns. 
If I remember correctly, he was in the military and then was a military contractor. He was also a pilot, so he captured this photo and claims that these circles are UFOs that are in camouflage. This is a picture of three crafts going into the mountain. So Mount Archuleta itself is on Apache land, correct? Right, yeah, so we are actually in the Hikaria Apache Nation territory. Residents here have believed in the star people for thousands of years. They say that these ancient beings visited their ancestors in flying craft and passed on knowledge. They do have their own rules and regulations, so we can't just drive in and explore on our own. We actually have to be accompanied by a tribal member. So I have contacted an Apache Nation leader, and we have permission to go where we need to go. So how did you get involved in the paranormal world? Oh, wow. As long as I can remember, I mean, when I was probably in my early teens, I would take my friends out on investigations. I really got into this field for the thrill of it. I feel like people aren't just making up these stories. There's just too many. I mean, there could be aliens on this planet right now. I remain skeptical for sure, but I would say we are not alone in this universe. Now, who is this tribal elder that you know? Avery Tafoya is a member of the Apache Nation Council, and he's lived in Dulce all of his life, and his dad was chief of the Hickoria Police Department in the 70s when they first started having these cattle mutilations and having these UFO sightings. Hi, Avery. Hello. So, have a lot of people in this community experienced sightings? I have heard stories, and there is sightings still to this day around Archuleta Mesa and pretty much throughout the town. There's a lot of native cultures that call it the same thing. They call them star people, and these are supposedly the good aliens. Why do you think the stigma still exists that people don't want to talk about it? I think a lot of it's just the ridicule. You don't want to be labeled crazy. It does take a lot for someone to step up and talk about it. Last week, we were out taking a ride in the evening hours before it got dark, and we seen a, a light in the sky basically a UFO, there was no sound, just a bright light. Who was with you? My son and uh, my grandson. My daughter saw a UFO going into the face of Archuleta Mountain. Avery's so tied into the community here, he pretty much knows everyone, so he's gonna be really helpful to us to find witnesses and really save us a lot of time. I'm curious to see what Avery's daughter Katie saw above the mountain. So we've come to her home in Dulce to see if we can learn any more about her own sighting. So can you tell us what you saw and what happened? We were coming home from my father's house, actually, and as we hit the top of the hill, on the corner of my eye, I just seen like a really, like something shiny. Bigger than a helicopter, but no exhaust. By the time I started to look up, my boyfriend was already like pointing, and I was like, oh, yeah, I see it. On the corner of my eye, I just seen like a really, like something shiny. We're investigating the claim that a secret alien base is hiding inside a mountain in a remote area of northern New Mexico. This is what I seen going into the mountain. Okay, so this itself is Mount Archuleta, right? Yes. And then this is the, the craft itself? Yes. No exhaust. There's absolutely nothing around it. You can see the blue sky and everything around it. Now, was it going inside the mountain? Yes, I would say so. When I first seen it, it was already looking like it was going into the mountain. Now, if this is to scale, this craft looks pretty large. Would you say it was the size of a car? I would actually say bigger than a car. When we look up there, we see cars, and they just look like little ends. Bigger than a helicopter, but smaller than a plane. And what would you say the material, what was it made out of? Uh, it had to be made out of some kind of metal. Do you yourself believe that there's an underground hidden base in Mount Archuleta? Yes, I do. What makes you think that? All the activity we see around here, the weird lights. These sightings seem so common that when you talk to the residents, it seems like they're seeing these things all the time and generations before them and their family are seeing the same things. There are signs of their beliefs everywhere, even on the rocks nearby. Why would they draw aliens and spaceships in their art if they hadn't seen them? They almost expect to look into the sky and see something unexplainable. That was definitely worth the drive. 
Katie's story seemed convincing enough, her testimony is just another example of a Dulce resident who's seen something inexplicable in the sky. I'm excited to hit the road and track down more witnesses who have insights to share. I love hearing people's stories, and that's always just so fascinating to me. It's evident that something has to be going on here if this many people are still seeing the same thing, and the mountain is always a focus. New Mexico has a long history with UFOs going all the way back to 1947, when the U.S. Air Force initially claimed a flying saucer crashed in Roswell. With this legacy and the folklore about star people, it's no wonder the Apache are open-minded about alien encounters. Our Apache Nation contact, Avery, suggested we meet with a tribal member who has possible video evidence after filming an unusual sighting. I'm intrigued to see the footage. So Heather, growing up here, was the idea of UFOs a thing? Did people see them? Did they talk about them? People would see them around or they'd talk about it. It was kind of like one of those camp story things. Could we look at the video that you took? Yeah. So in this part, I'm coming home, getting off of work, and I see something catch my eye off to the side. It stopped in the air. So when I saw it stop, I took my phone out and I started recording, and then it started going. It was really weird. It was the oddest thing ever. What do you think it was? I have no idea. It was a cigar-shaped object floating across the sky. That thing stopped in midair. And now it's going back behind our mountain towards our Chileta. So if we look at the video, it's taken off of a cell phone. It's not as close up as we would like it to be. It's a little bit shaky. But there is something inherently interesting about how it moves. It kind of floated off into the distance over the mountain where I am. And then our Chileta Mesa is the mountain behind mine. And have you ever seen anything like that before or after? No. Would you be able to provide us with a copy of that? Um, yeah, sure. We get caught up in this idea that UFOs mean extraterrestrials. That's not what it means. It's an unidentified flying object, which is what this cigar-shaped object is. However, it does back up the numerous stories that have been passed down over generations of people seeing unidentified objects in the sky. The fact that so many sightings are reported near Archuleta Mesa could support the claim that there is some kind of military base there. I want Avery to take us up the mountain so we can take a look for ourselves. On the Apache Nation side, one rugged road leads up. We're gonna be driving up the road. Even though the road was steep and a little rocky, it's gonna get worse, more rocks on the road. If you start spinning, let me know on the radio and we'll see what we can do. Is that the rock face up there that has the supposed opening that people have been talking about? Yeah, that's one of them. There might be another one to the west. It's pretty incredible to be right here at Dulce Base and to be able to get to the bottom of all of the rumors that you hear and really find out if there is an underground alien base. Okay, you ready to go? Let's do it. This place is a lot more remote than what I would have thought and it would be relatively easy to do pretty much whatever you wanted without a lot of people knowing. People don't have access to this area and we literally haven't seen another person all day. If you don't think our government could build a secret multi-level base in a mountain, think again. We know the US has built bases inside mountains before, like the famous NORAD base at Cheyenne Mountain in Colorado. It's quite possible, even likely, that there are underground bases we don't know about. It'll be next to impossible to examine the cliff face ourselves. So I'm calling in a drone operator to get us a bird's eye view. We're hopeful that a more precise perspective can shed light on these bizarre cavities. That was quite, quite the journey. So where is this mysterious cliff face we keep hearing about? Okay, right here to the south of us. It'll be the face of the mountain that we drove under coming up. Do you mind if we take a look around? Yeah, it's fine. Wow, look at this view. It really is breathtaking. But the logistical challenges of coming up here on a regular basis, I just don't see it unless there's a helipad somewhere. I mean, the road, imagine other times of the year. There's no way, so I feel like air travel is the only thing that makes sense. 
So my drone guy's gonna come up. I'll have a thermal cam and hopefully he'll be able to show us what we can't see. Great. And I think we should look for any signs of any kind of opening, anything in camouflage in the ground that can open up, because many people have reported seeing vents. Okay. Now this cliff face that we're looking at is about 400 feet high, so there's no way that we can look at it by ourselves. So we brought in a drone operator, and basically we are looking for anything which may indicate some sort of cavern, some sort of shaft that could lead to something else down below. Yeah, uh, wind speed's picking up a little bit, um, and it looks like we got a storm coming in from the east. This vertical line right here, can you get closer to that? Yeah, definitely. What is that right there? It's like a little groove, like a door. Can you fly the drone in there? Oh, that's interesting. What is that? That that really does kind of look like an opening. Okay, can you get closer? Mm -hmm. We've come to New Mexico to investigate a long-standing story that a secret alien base is inside a mountain on Apache territory. Getting up to the top of Mount Archuleta is only the first challenge. So we brought in a drone operator. He's going to attach a thermal camera. And basically, we are looking for heat signatures. Any temperature variation is going to be a point of interest for us. That's interesting, too. Yeah. There have been reports of people finding air vents coming out of the ground. There are even obscure photos of what appear to be openings indicating something built underground. But I don't see anything in this area of the mountain. Did you find anything? You know, as far as heat signatures, it looks pretty uniform across the face of it, although there were features I was particularly interested in. You have this vertical line, which the drone operator zoomed in right there. Okay. And then you have this sort of groove, and he went back into it, and it looks almost like a door of some sort. So watch, he'll go in. You see? Right there? Mm-hmm. Hmm. What's that? Temperature change? 94, but then it did go up to 100 and something. I do want to look at this a little bit more. Yeah, we should definitely look into that. This storm is getting a lot closer, the, the thunder and the lightning. I think we should get off the top of the mountain before we get stuck up here. That's a good idea. Incidents continue to swirl around Mount Archuleta in northern New Mexico. Members of the Hickoria Apache Nation frequently report sightings of unusual craft, but the area's strange history also includes one of the longest running unsolved mysteries of the American West. We've come to the Tafoya family ranch where several cattle were once mutilated, a bizarre series of events that some have claimed was the work of aliens. It started around 1972. Um, and I'm going to say there was at least 10 cows that were mutilated. So your dad was the chief of police for years. Yes. And what were his thoughts as to what was going on? You know, at first they were baffled because of the lack of blood and just the way they were cut up. The cuts were laser cut. Mm -hmm. At first they thought it was cows dying from natural causes. But normally when an animal dies, the scavengers will get to it right away. The crows, the coyotes. As they started investigating and finding out that the predators were leaving these carcasses alone. That to me is just interesting. Apparently the predators were not touching the cattle. Yes. That's so, really unusual. When these cattle were found, was there any other signs of human activity around them? Did you see tire tracks? Did you see marks of any sort? No, there was no uh, footprints, boot prints, or any of that. There was tripod marks on the ground, and that's pretty much all they found around the cows. And also they would find broken bones on the cow, like broken ribs or broken arm. 
which meant it was probably dropped a distance. So you're suggesting that some type of machinery came in and lifted up the cows and took them someplace? Yes. And that's what brought in the theory it was aliens and UFOs. Has anyone ever reported seeing a cow actually being lifted up and, and flown around? No, I actually haven't. But again, it's in the middle of the night most of the time. Do you believe that the cattle mutilations were related to what was supposedly happening at Archuleta Mesa or Dulce Base at that time? Yes, I do. And a lot of people have that same theory. The one thing that really stands out to me is when these mutilations are occurring, why are people seeing unexplained lights in the sky? Why are they seeing crafts? That's the big question that I have. What are these lights and why are they occurring? To back up his claims about the cattle mutilations, Avery has offered to introduce us to one of the original investigators. I have a gentleman here. He's worked with my father and the cow mutilations. And also, he has some information on the underground base up on Archuleta. Uh, his name's Hoyt Velarde. Hoyt, what was the time period that the cattle mutilations took place? I'd say the early 60s to still going on today. We investigated over 200 head. Like this one here, this cow died there, was mutilated there. Hmm. These things are evidence right here, these cuts. See, these incisions. Who do you think is responsible for these mutilations? Well, the first thing that happened is everybody started looking at the skies because they didn't understand it. Said, somebody said they saw helicopters. Two cowboys riding back to their camp in the afternoon. Summer day, horses walking. It was hot, so that everything sort of standing still. And all of a sudden, they hear a the horses jump and they jump and start looking back. Before they turned, they felt a light breeze. They went back and uh, found a cow laying there. What was the condition of the cow? The cow was mutilated, no tongue. They didn't see anything, but they did feel a light breeze. Normally when you go into an investigation, there's you know a thread somewhere you can pull where everything unravels. And that's just not the case here. It's pretty bizarre. Journalist Greg Bishop investigated the mystery at Dulce Base by writing a book called Project Beta. He's long been compelled by the rumors which continue to swirl in New Mexico, and we're meeting him to learn more about the cattle mutilations, the alien rumors, and speculation of a government cover-up. So thank you so much for joining us, Greg. We have a lot of questions about cattle mutilations, so. It seemed to be northwestern New Mexico, southern Colorado was where it was concentrated at the time. Senator Harrison Schmidt was getting complaints, letters and all that from ranchers saying, we're losing cattle, we don't know why, it's becoming a serious problem. Are you aware of any similarities between these cattle mutilations? Well, the similarities are what's going on and what is found is unexplainable by normal means. Predators don't leave anticoagulants in cattle. Predators don't leave surgical scars that are cauterized. Predators don't go in and take organs out from inside of, <laughs> inside of cattle without leaving any obvious incision marks. The funny thing is when the FBI decided to investigate it, all the mutilation stopped during the time of the investigation. And then when they finished it, it started up again. So somebody knew something was going on. Do you think that there was a base inside of Archuleta Mountain? In Dulce, I think that there are a lot of sightings of strange things. I used to think that there was nothing there and this was just rumors started by the government. People used to see things flying around there quite a lot. And Project Beta was what Paul Benowitz called his project to figure out what was going on with some sort of alien invasion he thought was coming. I believe there was something there. I don't know what it was for. The craziest thing I could think is that it was some sort of facility to test aircraft, if you want to go into James Bondian type speculation. Is there anyone else who might be able to shed any light on the idea that a secret base in the mountains is connected to aliens? Have you thought of talking to Richard Doty? He was an Air Force Intel agent working there at the time. Talk to Doty yourself and make up your own mind. 
I was really glad that we got to talk to Greg. I felt like he had a lot to offer and the fact that he talked to Richard Doty in person. Yeah, I really hope we can nail an interview with Doty. I'll reach out and see what I can do. Okay. We've come to the National Museum of Nuclear Science in Albuquerque to meet one of the most controversial figures in the Dulce Base mystery. This is the oldest bomber in the fleet. Richard Doty was an intelligence agent for the US Air Force. His critics say he deliberately spread misinformation to manipulate the public's opinion on UFOs. You worked for the Air Force in the Office of Special Investigation as a intelligence officer? Yes. I conducted counterintelligence operations, counterespionage operations, centered around us trying to fool our adversaries of what a normal person would call disinformation. How does the cattle mutilations fit into all of this? It didn't just involve cattle. It involved game, uh, elk, deer, um, mountain lions. We've spoke with a lot of ranchers who have come across their cattle having what looks like strap marks, uh, finding tripod marks at the site. Does any of that sound familiar to you? That sounds like the black operations the government was doing. We, the government, took these uh, cattle up in, inside a helicopter to another location, then brought it back to where it was, was originally found. The United States government was conducting research to determine how much nuclear radiation they had. And this was done primarily in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even into the 90s, seeing if the cells were mutated or, or, or whether um, the offspring was mutilated. That program existed back then. What's the point in bringing it back? To keep the public from knowing what the government was doing. Okay. Are there any other reasons for disinformation campaigns besides national security? Yes, to hide a classified project. For instance, if somebody was to see a highly classified plane flying over their house or in their neighborhood, and they call somebody and say, I just saw a UFO, and it gets to the press, we may pay them a visit and try to convince them that what they saw was actually a UFO. On the other hand, if they saw a UFO, and we were puzzled by the fact that this thing defied aeronautical techniques and flying faster than we could have any aircraft fly, we try to convince them that what they saw was maybe a UFO. So it works both ways. As far as you know, what does the Air Force know about extraterrestrials? It goes back to 1947, the crash at Roswell. There was two crashes. The second craft landed in western New Mexico. Nobody wanted to believe them when they told the story, and one live ET was, was found in that craft. The ET was taken to Wright-Patterson? No, the ET was taken to Los Alamos. How many dead ETs were recovered? Five. Can we assume then that the government was working with aliens at some point? I was never briefed into that. We can deduce from the fact that we had one for five years that our government was working with him. He was providing information to the United States government about their technology, where they're from. So you've seen an extraterrestrial? I saw an extraterrestrial on a closed circuit television camera while I was at Area 51. Really? Yes. So you've seen an extraterrestrial? I saw an extraterrestrial on a closed circuit television camera while I was at Area 51. Really? Yes. The agent that was sitting in this room was looking at a closed circuit television camera. Now, this is 1980s, you remember. And I asked him, I said, what are we looking at? He said, they're interviewing one of them. Now, what I saw was a gray T, large eyes, sitting in a chair. There was a man next to him. They were communicating telepathically. I wasn't supposed to see it, but I saw it. To your knowledge, has the government ever tried to reverse engineer any ET craft? Yes. When I was in Area 51, I saw crafts flying, was doing things that we couldn't do with an airplane. And I was briefed in 1984 that we had connections with five different alien races. We had some kind of technology from them. Talking with Richard Doty is a really big deal because you know he's infiltrated UFO circles and spread disinformation, but yet he worked at Area 51 and he was really involved with the government during the time of all these strange occurrences. When you first hear the story about Paul Benowitz and what he discovered, a lot of people are quick to dismiss that, but it does seem like there was a lot going on that later proved to be true. Yes, I think he tapped into something. Is there a base down there? 
Uh, I don't know. I, I was never down there. I've never read anything about a base or a secret base. That's my knowledge of, of Dulce. You know, clearly you had a personal relationship on some level with Paul. When all of this happened and Paul ended up committed, how did you feel about that knowing that you were participating in this disinformation campaign that could have led to that? Well, the nuts and bolts of this is that Paul was already a believer in UFOs. He came to us and he told us that these were UFOs. We never drugged him. We never did, uh, performed any kind of disinformation, hoaxes or psych operations on him. None of that is true. Richard Doty's testimony was amazing. I mean, he said he saw an actual extraterrestrial at Area 51, and that's one question everybody's been dying to know. It almost makes me wonder if the cattle mutilations and the UFO activity in this area are connected. Richard, do you still work in misinformation? No, absolutely not. I feel like that was the wildest interview I've ever had. He basically threw every conspiracy theory in the book at us. Do you believe him? I do believe that the military launched a disinformation campaign because what makes more sense from a national security standpoint? That it's extraterrestrials or that it is a top secret military aircraft? They want to keep that quiet. I keep thinking about this. Why would the government need to test cattle for radiation and then cover it up? Think if we can figure out why, that will help us understand what is happening at Mount Archuleta. Heather's going to delve into the cattle mystery while I review our UFO footage of Mount Archuleta with a pilot. Brian Mahoney was a military pilot who flew helicopters during the 80s and early 90s. I'm excited for someone with his insight and credentials to take a look at this footage. Brian, thank you so much for joining me. I have some footage that I'd love for you to look at. Well, I'd love to see it, Jan. Let's talk a little bit first about your experience in the Army, how long you flew, and what you flew. I flew attack helicopters for the entire decade of the 1980s. Mostly I flew in, in Western Europe and then uh, a lot in California, Central America with one of the task force. And so you've flown over New Mexico a handful of times. Is there anything different about New Mexico than any other place that you've flown? I will tell you. On my map, there were red lines everywhere. We could not just fly any way we wanted to fly. And so the red lines are showing that there are no fly zones, essentially. No fly zones. A lot of restricted airspace in New Mexico. This is a state where they developed the atomic bomb. You've got three different Air Force bases. These guys work on all the new R&D. There's a lot of stuff going on in New Mexico. Nevada gets the attention, but I'm telling you, this state, if someone says they saw something, they probably saw something. So we have some footage that I wanna show you. And you know, from a lay person's point of view, yes, I'm a veteran, but I'm not an aviator. I'd love to get your POV on this. Now this was taken in the Hickoria Apache Nation by oh, I see a resident it. who lives there. Oh, that's cool. Oh, okay. What is that doing? Now, what are your thoughts based off of the movement? Okay. I know it's very hard to see because it's far away, but... <laughs> well, it is from this perspective, but right away I can tell you there's no laws of physics being broken here. Everything is within a traditional flight envelope of technology that we already have, that already exists. I would say that there is not enough data to support a conclusion. The interesting thing about this, Heather, who took the video, said that the reason she pulled out her phone was because she saw this craft, whatever it was, stop in midair. And that was enough for her to say, wait, maybe I should have this recorded. If it stopped in midair, then you're talking about a different ball game. But I have seen visual illusions before when an aircraft turns, makes a 60 to 90 degree turn, and it looks for a few moments like it is hovering in midair. At this distance, she could have been mistaken for that particular moment. We both know from serving in our respective branches that the military keeps secrets and they're very good at keeping secrets. Something like this, how hard is it to keep a secret for an extended amount of time? Sometimes things don't even go past, as a pilot, they don't even go past the officer's club. Sometimes it makes it up to battalion level, sometimes division, sometimes the Pentagon. So, uh, yes, can we keep secrets? I think there's no one like the United States military that can keep secrets. Heather and I are meeting with a geologist to show him the footage of the mountain and find out whether a secret underground base is even possible. 
Based off of your experience as a geologist, what do you see here? For the locals to look up and see this, this would be a bit unusual because the, the cracks, instead of being horizontal, are vertical. There's several spots on the mountain, but that one is where people have said that they believe aircraft is entering and exiting. So I think this is probably a volcanic rock. These vertical cracks form when it's close to the surface and it starts to cool off, like a cake will cool and make these cracks in them as it's sitting on your counter. Lava does the same thing. Now, if we're looking at a facility like Nora, that actually is built inside of a mountain. What are the differences between that and something like this? NORAD is built in a feature called Cheyenne Mountain, and it is what we call a high-grade rock, which means it's a very, very hard rock. It's like over a billion years old, and it's a good building material. So in other words, if you made a tunnel in Cheyenne Mountain, the tunnel's probably not gonna collapse. So a volcanic rock, because something like this has a lot of cracks in it, we would have sheets of rock falling down on our heads, right? With the exception that unless we go deeper into this mountain and we get these warm magmas that are cooling without cracking, and then you can get some pretty hard rocks, actually. I think building something deeper is not out of the question, depending on how deep those cracks go. Interesting. So, Cody, from your personal assessment, do you think it's possible that there could be a base in this mountain? Frankly, the more I think about it, it's kind of a genius. If you're going to have a hidden base, Obviously, you would want it in a mountain with vertical cracks in it so you could hide the door, you know? So my professional opinion, probably not, but I certainly can't rule it out. So many experts we've spoken to allege that this mystery is linked to a government cover-up of the testing of secret military craft. But as we move forward with this investigation, I'm now convinced that things are not what they seem. New Mexico has always been a centralized location for the nation's most advanced technology. In fact, the first atomic bomb was actually set off there in 1945. Apparently, Heather found something surprising. She asked me to meet her at a remote site back near the Hickoria Apache Nation. Project Gas Buggy. Yeah, so this is the site of Project Gas Buggy. In 1967, the United States Department of Energy, they were looking for a peaceful use for nuclear weapons. And they had this idea to detonate a nuclear bomb to release the natural gas in the shale. Basically, a modern day fracking. Didn't go according to plan, I take it. It did not go well. It obviously released a lot of radiation. This test site is right outside of Apache territory. It's very possible that not only the groundwater, but the land could have been contaminated. So we have to take into account the people who consume the cattle. Maybe the government, they knew they made a mistake. These cattle found on ranchers' land with strap marks and broken ribs as if they have been moved by helicopter, as if the government has been conducting tests, testing samples of tissues and organs for radiation. They then put the cattle back to make it look like a predator got to it. Well, that's where they messed up, right? Exactly. No predators are going to eat them because of the radiation, so they're just left there. So you're saying the government or the military comes in clandestinely at night, they hook cattle up to helicopters using these straps, they carry them off, they dissect them somewhere else, and then they bring them back. That's a lot. It is. But if there is a government presence, there could be a base in the Arch Lita Mesa. So much to unpack, Heather. Yes, this is a lot of information. Okay, what do you have? So we have Cheyenne Mountain Complex, which is definitive proof that underground bases do exist in America. Okay, so we have reports. We have photo of a photo. Supposedly these are craft entering the mountain. Cattle mutilations. Now we've got Benowitz, the benowitz Doty connection. He obviously caught things on camera that were real. As he was flying overhead, he saw areas where he thought crafts could have been. And? And then this is Richard Doty, back in the day. When we were talking to him, I had a hard time ascertaining what was misinformation and what was real. And additionally, 
what misinformation was fed to him that he believes is actual information. Right, so he may not even really fully know the truth. This whole base underneath the ground though, I just feel like the evidence does not exist for that. Talking to Cody, the geologist, and he explained the rock formation and how that works and how different it is mm -hmm. from NORAD and Cheyenne Mountain, it just doesn't seem feasible. And we keep getting these eyewitness reports of these aircraft helos that are supposedly coming in and out of the mountain. I don't know if that's an optical illusion. I'm not sure what's happening there, but I don't know if I'm comfortable completely discounting the dozens of people who have said, this is what we've seen. They know their land, they know the area. What are they seeing? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the people we talk to, they've lived in Dulce all their life. Their grandparents have been seeing the same thing, so we have to take some of it into account that there's something going on here. A lot of the reports, a lot of the eyewitnesses match when it comes to cattle mutilations. We have legitimate people who are coming forward with stories of this is what I found on my ranch, this is what I found on my farm, mm -hmm. and know what a livestock passing away from natural causes looks like, and that's not what we're seeing. And why does it seem as though the cows are literally picked up and then dropped? If it's the government coming to take these cattle away, why has no one seen this happen? And Project Gas Buggy, it's a good explanation for the mutilations in this area, but it doesn't account for the presence of aliens. So is it the government spreading these rumors of aliens? It turned into this sort of alien storyline and then people ran with it because I have not seen anything that would lend credence to there may even be aliens there. People say, well, if they were able to build this inside the mountain, our government built this inside the mountain without aliens. Right. I'm not discounting what people in Dulce have seen because people say that they've seen other things, but do I think that there's aliens inside the mountain? No, I obviously don't believe that. If you want to conceal radiation testing in the environment or shield development of top secret weapons, to me, a military cover-up makes perfect sense.